Good morning. Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 270, and we are in Fort Myers this morning uh, doing an errand for a friend. So thank you for your patience and understanding that we're not at the beach today, but just like with everyone else's life, sometimes things get in the way. We don't always get things exactly how we want them. Uh, but life goes on and you try to make it fun anyway. So thanks everybody for joining me live. I see DJ, Melissa, Lily, uh, Joe, Audrey. Thank you for joining me live. Good morning. Hi, Ava. Good morning, Julie. Thanks for joining live. Hi, Karen. Good morning, Judy. Hi, Lily. Thanks everybody for joining live. Hi DJ. Good morning, Chris. Thanks for joining live. Hi Lisa. Good morning. If you're joining me live, let me know what you're crafting. If you end up watching the recorded version, please also feel welcome to say hello. Or let me know what you're crafting on. I love to reply to all the recorded messages as well. Hi Rebecca and Carrie from Australia. Judy, good morning. Melissa, Carmen, thanks for joining live. Hi, Audrey. Karen's working on a double knit hat. Wonderful. That'll be good for cold weather. Hi, Maria. Good morning, Sherry. Oh, oh, Ava's sick with a horrible cold. Homemade chicken soup. That's my, uh, that's what I go, that's my go-to. I have a great recipe for it on my website, too. Good morning, Grace. Uh, I always like to doctor up homemade bone broth type soup with lemon and garlic and ginger and parsley and Marlon and I swear by it when we're coming down with a cold. So if anybody's interested, that recipe's on my website. Yep, it's, I swear by it when either of us feel like we're coming down with something. Definitely, that would be my go-to medicine for a cold. Karen does the same thing, yep. In fact, yesterday, uh, somebody texted me that Publix had turkeys on sale for 49 cents a pound. So I ran over to Publix and grabbed a turkey, roasted it. We had made a nice dinner with turkey last night. I made a light gravy and some gluten-free pasta and made like a pasta dish with it. It was delicious. But the whole reason I bought the turkey was to take that carcass, put it in my Instant Pot and make bone broth last night. So I cut the carcass in half and made two separate batches of bone broth so that I have a giant amount because half of a turkey carcass is plenty with some onion, celery, and carrots to make the broth. So I did that two separate times. I have two gallons of broth right now and I'm so excited. I'm going to take por portions of it and freeze it, take portions of it and um, uh, put it in the refrigerator and come up with some different soups and uh, things with it. But, oh God, I love making homemade soups. soup. Soup. Uh, you know what, Rebecca? Bone broth is this new way of saying stock, I guess. I don't know. I hear lots of people talk about it and call it bone broth. I boil bones in water with some aromatic vegetables and it's homemade, it's, it's homemade broth. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not quite sure what technically makes it bone broth, but it feels like it's a catchy phrase. I'm not sure. If anybody has better information about it, please let me know. Um, please leave it in the comments. But I do believe that the reason it's called that is because the longer you cook something or Instant Pot pressure cook it, you extract all of the um, nutrients from the marrow and the bones. Yeah, Grace, but, it's, but we've always made soup from bones and we never called it bone broth before. Yeah, Judy, I think it's a fancy new word for stock. If I'm wrong, please feel welcome to correct me, anybody, but I like the way it sounds. <laughs> I don't mind it. Uh, it's kind of catchy, and it reminds you that you're, uh, you're getting all those nutrients from the inside of the bones. If you're a vegetarian, that might gross you out, and I'm sorry about that. Good morning, Gerilyn. Uh, Melissa agrees. That's what she thinks, too. Yeah, who knows? Maybe someone will Google it and tell us what the difference is. Ava loves her Instant Pot. You know, I don't use it as much as I used to, uh, but I love it for what I love it for. There's no other way that I prefer to make um, stock or bone broth. There's no other way that I prefer to make beans from dried beans. 
and um, oh by the way someone sent me a video the other day that you can make wine in your instant pot and I'm a little interested to try that um, because I studied winemaking a couple years ago with some books and it's very complicated and for some reason these videos that I saw said that if you use the yogurt setting on your instant pot and you do a very slow process with grape juice and sugar and um, wine yeast you can make wine and I don't know I think it I think it's worth an experiment or two what do you think <laughs> if I do I will definitely share my results with all of you um, yeah Chris says oh bone broth is just using bones as opposed yeah the collagen's really good for you in it too Ava's family makes wine wonderful oh I'm so glad you asked Sherry I brought a few things to demonstrate this morning First of all, I wanted to show, remember those adorable hair clips that we used yesterday for our first silly segment where we um, decorated a hank of yarn that was so fun. I got so much great positive feedback from all of you, so I'm definitely feeling encouraged to do more silly segments. And one thing that I forgot to mention yesterday is I really wanted to try to structure the silly segments into being more like uh, Mythbusters where at the end of the segment we decide was this legit or was it just plain old silly did it work right well i feel like yesterday it worked i feel like decorating those hanks of yarn with the little clips actually worked and they were super cute so i would like to say that that segment was a success and i'm not sure how i'll word it but at some point as i get better at the segment i want to somehow say that i want to somehow close the segment with whether it was pure old silliness and didn't work or if it worked. Rebecca had uh, dreams about butterflies last night. Wonderful. That's awesome. All right, so I brought one of the bigger ones with me this morning and I brought some actual yarn pieces, uh, finished pieces, so I could show you that it's actually a great way to decorate yarn, or finished projects too. So remember how we talked about the fact that you could turn a scarf into a cowl by instead of tying it you could clip it this isn't the one i wanted to bring but i brought it anyway so we're just going to go with it and so if you tied it around a couple of times or wrapped it around a couple of times instead of feeling the need to tie it you could clip it instead so how cute is that so you've turned a scarf into a cowl because you clip it. Uh, hi, Angela. Thanks for joining live. Bye, Ava. Have a good day. So now we've turned a scarf into a cowl with a clip. Um, oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Melissa. So this is an example of turning a scarf into a cowl by using a clip, and I think it's a fantastic idea. I love this. I would do it over and over again. You could also do this for the headscarf version. Uh, or maybe not even head scarf, but even just as a headband. I'm going to try folding it in half. So if I was going to try to do it like this, I could clip it back here. And then I could even maybe try to pull some of my hair out on the top. No, nope, I'm going to leave it. No, nope, that, that wouldn't work. Hold on trial and error <laughs> so one second all right so I'm gonna try putting the headband here and instead of tying it you could clip it instead and remember yesterday we were talking about head scarves where you would wear them flat and more over your head this would be great for that too but I forgot to bring the piece that I wanted to do that for see now I think that looks super cute and then look at what a surprise you get in the back Get to see the butterfly in the back too did you see the butterfly or do i need to turn around more straight on i love this color because it ties in with the earrings too there's gold in the earrings and then the purple in the earrings matches my top so it kind of all goes together yeah definitely hippie-ish but super fun maybe even do a wave in your hair if you're going to do this or if you're lucky enough to have naturally wavy hair love how the tails come down too so even doing it once instead of doubled so that the tails were longer would be fun too you know and fluff it so your ears don't stick out 
even wear it higher up. Depends on what kind of hairstyle you have on that given day. You would wear it up over here. If you had bangs, your bangs would come through. Or if you like this further down. Thanks, Rogue Rogue Wonder. But hey, I think it's super cute. And I love the idea that it's the butterfly in the back instead of the uh, instead of just a knot. Just something a little more exciting. So then I was going to also show you that if you were going to wear a cardi vest, you would use this. What scarf pattern is it? If someone else remembers the name, for some reason it's eluding me, but it's a free pattern on my website. And you can find it by looking at crochet patterns, scarf patterns, or be so fine yarn patterns. It's definitely on my website. Okay, so don't exactly have the right outfit on for this today, but although the color contrast is gorgeous with the purple. So I've shown you a lot of different ways of styling this, but how cute is that instead of a button? Right? Isn't that adorable? And if you used the smaller butterflies or the smaller flower clips, you could actually fake them into looking like buttons going all the way down. I, they're out in the car. I didn't bring them. If, if you're interested in seeing that, I could do that another day. I'll do the smaller clips and clip them down like evenly spaced buttons. But I'll tell you, I think this is absolutely adorable. I don't know why I never did this before. Yeah, the earrings do tie together the gold and the purple, don't they? They really do. <laughs> is anybody having other questions about that? I should have brought more pieces and I apologize, but you know what? I. Uh, was running out the house at six-ish this morning and I thought I grabbed everything I wanted to and I was working really late last night on shipping so I uh, grabbed more and I'll tell you why I was really scrambling last night but um, I'll come to that in a few minutes when I talk about another exciting thing this morning. <laughs> the, the pattern, uh, this pattern is called the Fantastical a fantastical crochet vest and you can search by that on my website also grace i've used plain hair yep and if you didn't receive a book shipping notification yet then it's because you didn't get into the first box uh for, uh, for some reason my order came in segments and i've been shipping the box the books out as they come in and um the balance of my books will arrive today, so I will begin shipping all the balance of the pre-orders today, and I should have them all shipped out by Monday. So fingers crossed, but that's the plan. Anne says, bummer. Well, I'm sorry, Anne, but as soon as the books get here, they are going out the door, I promise. And the balance of the pre-order books arrived today, so if you're still waiting on a book it is definitely coming very very soon oh and i remember how we talked i talked about how i come up with a different phrase for the inscription of each book well i came up with the inscription for this book just before um just before the first batch of books arrived so when you get your book you will see what i came up with yep the rest of them will be arriving I mean, if I'm getting the books today and I ship no later than Monday, I can't, I'm not sure how many will actually go out today. Probably none, but if I can find, we may have a post office that has a level of pickup on Saturday. Most of my post offices are closed because I'm in a pretty small area, but everything else will ship by Monday for sure. For sure. And everybody waiting on a book for me already has the ebook. So if you're anxious to get started on the project projects, you have the instructions already. Rebecca got her copy of Motif Magic yesterday. Wonderful. What was someone telling me about Motif Magic yesterday? I uh Lisa, if you could email me about that, I'm not going to remember a request during a live stream podcast. I'm sorry, but if you would like to email me about that, that would be no problem. Oh, Susie's got uh, ordered her 80 handmade gifts book from Amazon in Germany, and she got it today. Wonderful. Yeah, it's available on Amazon Prime in every 
uh, market in the world. So wherever you live, you can order on Amazon and get a copy of any of my books, Motif Magic, 80 Handmade Gifts, any of the Create, Share, Inspire journals. They're all available on Amazon throughout the world. How cool is that? Uh, okay, where was I going with that? Okay, so we, oh, I got an amazing email yesterday and it actually made me cry, but it made me cry in a good way. I had a mom and her high school daughter email me that her high school daughter for her health class in high school was writing a book on domestic violence and when she was doing her research, she came across my website and my resource pages for my charity project, Kristen Cares, and she ended up using a lot of the resources that I shared from that page, from my pages for her project and her mom, she and her mom reached out to me to tell me how much they appreciated all of my work in education for domestic violence and dating abuse. I love that they, that she combined both subjects in her paper because dating abuse is huge, is a huge problem as well and maybe something I need to combine when I talk about them more often. But anyway, she said, thanks to my hard work and my efforts, she's now able to spread my words. She's able to now spread help and education to more people because of learning from me. And um, <laughs> there I go again. That's awesome, right? You know, you never know how you touch somebody, especially nowadays where we spend so much time alone and we spend so much time just talking to people online but not really connecting with people in person. And we do have the ability to reach so many people, but we always we don't always know how we reach people. And so to know that I not only touch their lives, but now through that connection, they're able to educate and touch other people's lives. I just thought that was really, really cool. <laughs> yes. Yes, Grace, dating abuse is as big a deal as domestic violence. Putting a ring on the finger doesn't necessarily make a difference and living together doesn't necessarily make a difference, which is what I think constitutes the domestic violence, living in the same house, being married, whatever, whatever. But dating abuse can start with first date, first meetup, uh, second date, whatever, so. <sighs> yeah, so really awesome. And it's, you don't always get those emails and you don't always get that feedback. So it was very, very nice to hear that yesterday. So thank you to them. I do get lots of nice emails though, but really cool. Uh, Jagger, hi Jagger, thanks for joining live. Okay, so. I have um, okay so I have more exciting news to tell you I had a brainstorming session with one of my editors last night and we were talking about the crochet encyclopedias good morning Belle thanks for joining live and uh, we I I was thinking about some I was thinking about some different ways to reorganize it and maybe have a different visual aspect to it and I really was looking to color code the book and hadn't really solidified how to do that and through my brainstorming session with Grace one of the editors who is also one of our moderators here we had an awesome brainstorming session last night and I am so excited to get back to the crochet encyclopedia series my phone is blowing up this morning and I have no idea why a, a post must have automated automatically gone out I'm getting all of these likes 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 <laughs> maybe need to turn that off uh, anyway so I, uh, we had an amazing brainstorming session and so much of the book is done, but now I need to do a few more things and redo some other things, but it's going to be color coded and I can see the colors now. It's going to be colors that I love and colors that I always use. And it's going, and I really do believe that when you're organizing something and trying to stay organized, color coding is one of the ways to go. 
and I knew I needed to do it, but now through our brainstorming session, I know how to do it. So very, very excited about that. So while I'm sitting here this morning, I will be working on some projects for that series of books. Oh, Rebecca, that's the other email that I was remembering. I was remembering your email from yesterday. So, Re well, hello. Did you want to be on camera? Is that the problem? Oh, now you're going to be shy. All right. Well, then you be quiet over there. <laughs> Effort's hilarious. So anyway, yesterday, Rebecca received her copy of Motif Magic, and she sent me an email about it afterwards, explaining to me how much she appreciated the intro section to the book, where I talk about the deep in very in a lot of detail how to read patterns and I really appreciate that kind of feedback because I spend a lot of time trying to make things easier to understand and easier to read so anytime I get feedback positive or negative it actually helps me to be a better author a better book write book publisher and a better teacher so <laughs> Jagger thought the bird was out the side window. It was loud, wasn't it? Yeah. I know, but as soon as I replied to him, he freaked out. <laughs> that was too funny. Yeah, so thank you, Rebecca, because giving me feedback, positive or negative, positive I like better, obviously, but positive or negative feedback helps me to be a better whatever I'm, I am, so helps me to be a better teacher uh, or writer or publisher of books. Yes, Lily, I got your email too. Uh, your order hasn't gone out yet. And as long as your mailing address is fine, the email address shouldn't be a problem. Wow, I remember two emails back to back in a live stream. That's amazing. Doesn't mean I have a computer brain, but maybe I have a sharp memory today. Who knows? <laughs> Lisa has a new baby bird, a macaw. No, I haven't reached out to anybody about baby items yet, Sherry. I'll announce it here to let you know to look for an email. I promise. I haven't quite figured out how to, uh, how to work the system out. So when I do, I will send out an email and I'll let you know in the live stream podcast so that you are aware to look for it. The baby hats are done, Rebecca. I'm working on some baby blankets to go with them. And um, I, I looked up the, whatever someone told me about yesterday, the skip, ah, I can't remember, the rotary cutter skip thing, skip stitch tool. But I looked it up and I found one that I liked on Amazon yesterday. So it'll arrive tomorrow and I think I'm gonna wait for it to get here start doing the baby blankets because it looks way easier than the things that I was uh, going to attempt to uh, crochet edging on fleece or in it edging on fleece so as long as I have a better way to do it um, yeah, skip stitch skip stitch something I can't remember the rest of cutter I don't know Judy I think you're the one that recommended it yesterday so thank you for that uh, love the idea of that tool so I'm gonna wait to start them until tomorrow. And besides, now that I've got this fire in my belly to work on the encyclopedia. Uh, yes, Karen, you put it in the show notes and I went and looked on Amazon right away for it. So thank you both very much. That helped tremendously to uh, educate me on a new to me tool and I ordered it and uh, we'll be using it as soon as it arrives. Can't wait, so thank you very much. Skip stitch rotary cutter, that is correct, Grace, yes. Yeah, I found, in fact, if anyone's interested in the one I found, I'll put it in my Amazon shop. I found a pretty decent uh, price on one. Some of them were more expensive, some less, and I think I found a good one. But yeah, that bird does want um, some attention. He didn't want direct attention, though. Lisa, I think you're gonna love the encyclopedia book, and once I start it, it's going to be a 
series. So there'll be, um, I think there's gonna be five or six stitches in each volume, but then we're gonna take those stitches and blow them out of the water and do them every which way you can think of. So um, once you get the concept with the first one, I think you're gonna love it. And I think it's just going to be so helpful for everybody. Yeah, Joe, I'll share the one that I found. Absolutely. I think I ended up spending $10 or so on it. Yep, you put the blade on a rotary cutter. And I have a rotary cutter at home, but to be sure that that fit, I ended up buying the one that Amazon suggested just to be sure. Uh, and it doesn't hurt to have two cutters. Since this is something I'm going to be using for crochet and the other one is something I use for fabric and sewing, I thought it may not be the worst idea in the world to keep them in both places where I organize those tools because tools are important and organization is important too. <laughs> so I thought for another $10, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. They have them at Joann's as well. Oh shoot, I could have done that today. Oh well, I got on Amazon and it'll be here tomorrow. And like I said, I've got plenty to work on in the meantime. So I'll show you a sneak peek if you want. I'm going to be doing a shawl in three colors of Be So Tender yarn for the encyclopedia book. This is uh, ultraviolet, cobalt, and lagoon, and I think it's going to be gorgeous. And I'm going to do a cowl in Be So Cozy yarn in this color. And those are the two pieces that I'm going to work on today. And then I have five or six more projects to do and a handful of other things to photograph and need to redo some of the layout and uh, I'll be ready for the editing process again. Yay! They are beautiful colors, aren't they? And just so, so vibrant and electric. And honestly, I think these actually look nice with these as a collection too. And as you can imagine, these are probably the colors, similar to the colors that the color coding will be. They will probably, if, if you're ever guessing where my mind is going in a color palette, you can guess blue, green, purple, and pink, right? <laughs> That's usually where my brain's going. <laughs> Thank you, Lucia. I'm excited for these colors too. I am. I'm excited to get started. So as soon as we say goodbye here today, my fingers are going to start flying on making these projects and I'm so excited. <laughs> Yes, Sherry, always busy, busy. And today, the, uh, my massive boxes of pre-order 80 Handmade Gifts book arrive. So as soon as I get home later today, I get to open my brand new Sharpies, write all my personalized inscriptions and autographs in all of the copies and wrap them up nicely and ship, and ship out as many books as I can today to all of you amazing people that pre-ordered from me. Oh, Kim, you're going to love the encyclopedia. I love the encyclopedias. I think that they are an incredible resource and I can't wait to share them with all of you. You're going to love them. I'm sure of it. Mars been in a purple mood for months. Nothing wrong with that. I love purple. Rebecca's making earrings, hats, and scarves for Christmas presents this year. Wonderful. Sherry, crochet. Yes, the encyclopedias are crochet encyclopedias. I will probably eventually uh, entertain doing them for knitting as well. I think that the concept is wonderful for both crafts, but I'm start starting with crochet. Uh, Lisa, I don't understand the beginning of your question, but if you're asking about the encyclopedias, this particular uh, set of encyclopedias is going to be all crochet. And Grace was saying that these books will give you the power to create your own designs. Absolutely. Even if you're not a designer, and even if you have no interest in becoming a designer, you will have the desire to make your own patterns for yourself through this book. Absolutely. Thank you, Rebecca. Does anybody have any other questions? You're fine. Somebody asked me what I'm drinking this morning here. I started with tea and I didn't like the flavor. Um, will the encyclopedia be in US and UK terms? It will be in US terms, Kim. 
they'll be in US terms. But now that you mention it, it might be worth a page in the front matter talking about the differences. Oh, good. So I, I read, I was able to translate typo talk today, Lisa. That's good. Yes, Rebecca, I'm at a Panera in Fort Myers doing a favor for a friend. I do a favor for a friend once a week and sometimes it conflicts. Most of the time it conflicts with our podcast. Um, it's going to be lots of volumes, Julie. The encyclopedias are going to be lots and lots of volumes, which brings me back to my childhood because when I was a kid, my favorite thing in the world was our set of encyclopedias in the living room with that gold detailing on the edges of the pages. I used to sit in front of those and read them over and over and over again. I mean, this was pre-internet, right? And the only way you had to just discover random information or information you were interested in was to sit and just devour encyclopedias. And that was one of my favorite things to do as a kid, definitely. So the idea of creating my own set of encyclopedias is just, mind-blowingly awesome <laughs> yes I know I'm goofy I don't care <laughs> Joe did it too Mar did it too yay see I knew I wasn't alone see that's the beauty of being goofy and putting yourself out there you'll find that you there are people just like you anyway <laughs> Carmen set got her through college awesome um, I was born in 1972 and our first set of encyclopedias was from 1967 and I used to have a blast reading because we kept those because I guess my dad inherited them from his mom maybe and we always kept those and always had a current volume, a current set and which would have been in the 80s when I would be doing this. I was a, maybe preteen or young teen and I used to love comparing them. That was the other thing. So having two sets and having them 20 years apart was so, inter oh, this car's almost hit, <laughs> um, was so interesting to me to compare the differences. Very interesting. Uh, I see everybody else has memories of encyclopedias too. And maybe you haven't even thought of them in a while. So that's awesome too. They're good memories though. Unless you're on deadline for a term paper, then you might have, been, have panicky memories about encyclopedias. All right, well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. So if you change your mind and you have questions later, please always feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments because those recorded video comments stay and I have the ability to reply and answer all of them throughout the day. And those of you that have done it know that I reply to all of them. All right. Well, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed chatting with me and everyone else and all of my show and tell and little bits of information this morning. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you all tomorrow, hopefully at the beach. Bye. <laughs>